Hey, hey developers, today we're going to look at Nuxt, which is a server-side rendered framework for Vue.js, and we're going to look at TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript. I'm going to show you how you can get it set up inside a Nuxt project. We're also going to create a brand new Nuxt project using the create Nuxt app command, and I'll just show you how that works. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book, which you can find the link in the description below. So to get started, what I would do is there's this great site called typescript.nuxjs.org. You see it right here. It has some really cool steps on how to get started with Nuxt and TypeScript. So we'll get back to this in a second, but first, how do we create a Nuxt app? So the first thing you need to do is I have Visual Studio Code open up here. Um, but you can certainly open up your command prompt or or your command line, whatever you want. And then uh, make sure you have Node installed. I have Node, I believe version 10.8.0, but you can have you know Node 11, Node 12, it should work the same. And of course, NPM gets installed with it, and I have 6.2.0. And then to install it, a new Nuxt app, I do npx create Nuxt app. And then the name of it. So I'm going to do TypeScript example YouTube. Sorry, my keyboard's a little clicky. And what this will do is it'll download all the binaries and everything I need to get started. And it'll ask me some questions. So I'll just take a second here. Okay, so it should bring up this prompt here, which is going to ask me some questions about the Nuxt app that I want to create. And I really, I think. There's a few ways to create Nuxt apps. You can also use some starter kits. I did that in the past. Um, but this is actually probably one of the best ways to do it because it gives you a lot of different options. So first, I'm just going to hit enter here, the project name. I'm going to leave it TypeScript example YouTube. Uh, I'm going to leave it the same description. Me, the author, that's me. Uh, I'm going to use NPM as my package manager. I know a lot of people love Yarn, but uh, NPM is fine for me. And now this is cool. It asks me what UI framework I want to use. So I can do Ant Design, Bootstrap, Buffy, I don't know you, Buffy, Bulma, Element, Framework, iView, Tachyons, Tailwind, and Vutify. I actually did a v earlier, a video earlier of adding Vutify to a project. Of course, if I would have started off with this, I wouldn't have used it. I wouldn't have had to do that, but um, you can always add these in later. But I'm gonna, just for fun, I'm gonna add Vutify. And it's gonna ask you what server framework to use. Uh, so you can actually set it up so it, it'll it'll show you the server JS file it'll create and you'll actually see Express and it'll install everything for you. You don't really need this unless you want to add some more server framework stuff inside your view app or inside your Nuxt app. So I'm just gonna leave it none for now. And then I'm gonna leave an Axios. It's cool you can actually do a PWA right from this install. It asks you for it. Right now um, it asks you if I want to add in ESLint or Prettier. You can actually choose multiple ones, so I can do ESLint, Prettier, and Lint, um, or I could do none. But for now, I'm just going to do none. And then it's going to ask you what testing framework. I'm not going to do any testing. I'm just going to hit none there. And then it asks you if you are going to be using what rendering mode, like a universal SSR. That's usually when you run it, it actually starts like an express server or a node server, and it sends your HTML document as soon as the app loads. Or you can do it single page app, which is more kind of like view. But I'm going to do uh, SSR. And then it's going to ask you choose development tools. Um, since I'm using VS Code, it recommends I use JS Config. So sure, I guess I'll use it. And now it's going to go ahead and install the packages, which will just take a few moments. OK, cool. So went ahead and installed everything we need to get started. And it tells you how to get started. We can just change directory to YouTube and then run uh, npm run dev. So if I do that, it should start a server on localhost 3000. And it just takes a second. It'll do a bunch of client building and server building. It's kind of neat to have this little visualization, see what it's doing, how much memory usage is taking up. And then finally, we should be able to load it. Just takes a second here. Okay, I went ahead and got it running here. 
So actually off camera, uh, what I did real quickly is there's actually, uh, funny enough, there is a bug inside the Create Nuxt app right now that will give you this big ugly error. Uh, this thing right here, you'll see cannot read property key name of undefined. And that seems to only happen if you're creating a Vutify file um, with Create Nuxt app. They have an issue logged in their GitHub to fix it. So um, I went ahead and off camera, I just, just did the reinstall again using the Create Nuxt app, but this time I did not select uh, Vutify and it seemed to work. So just keep that in mind, just as of the time of this recording, there's like a bug with Vutify and Create Nuxt app, but I got it working. And also I went ahead and changed the correct folder. So I here I'm in Visual Studio Code and here's what it looks like. So you may have noticed when I did, when I was answering all those questions, it never asked me anything about TypeScript. So that's something we're gonna have to install uh, after the fact. It didn't, uh, it wasn't included with installer. And by the way, if you're wondering, this is Synthwave 84. It's a question I get all the time about what sort of theme I'm using in Visual Studio Code. And if I see another comment about it, I will point you to this timestamp. Anyways, so let's see if we can get TypeScript running. Now, if we use the handy dandy guide, it tells us that we need to install something. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. So I'm gonna bring up command prompt here and do this install and it'll just take a second. Okay, cool. So we install what we needed. And if we look here, it says now we need to do some configuration. So we're gonna look in the Nuxt config file. So let me just bring this down and we'll look in the Nuxt config and Inside that config file here, there we go. Control B, so that closes it. You can see here it's all our configuration, so we need to look for the build modules. And then inside here, we're just gonna copy and paste this in here. Cool, so that's in the build modules. And we need to add a new file called tsconfigjson. Uh, this is really important, you need this in here, so otherwise you won't have the right types. So we'll just go in here and we'll create a new file called tsconfig.json. And then we'll just copy and paste what we have here. And it says pretty much that's it for the, the normal configuration of TypeScript. One thing I like to do is run to add these runtime, which um, the runtime wrapper under dedicated package, the wrapper is a binary named nuxts. It's registered under TS node. So it's just so when you run things and you run your, your startup that it runs it correctly. So, so this Nux J TypeScript runtime, if I go into our package.json, uh, I don't have it installed. So I'll need to install this Nux.js TypeScript runtime. So I'm gonna run this command right here. So I'll just right click and it'll install it. Let's take a second. Okay, so since I have that installed now, I can go ahead and update my package.json. So I'll bring this back down. Here's my package.json. Um, I have my dev, build, start, and generate, but I want this dev, build, start, and generate, this one right here. So I'm going to just copy and paste it, delete the these ones, and then I'm going to add these dependencies. I have TypeScript runtime and Nuxt. There should be there in there already. And I have this dev dependency, which it went ahead and added in the TypeScript build. So yep, so I have everything I need now. So I should be able to, I'm not gonna skip the linting, but you can add linting later. I actually did another video on that. But now I should be able to run it and then create a TypeScript, oops. Um, I should be able to run it and run a TypeScript, uh, create a TypeScript single, single page component, excuse me. I had to spit that out. So let's run npm run dev and see here. Okay, it's running on localhost 3000. I always like to refresh it, make sure I don't get any errors while it's building. Cool, so I still looks okay right here. And let's just add another page. So if I go to page here, I'll do a new file and I call it, I don't know, eric.view. Uh, still make it a view file, by the way. Don't make it a TypeScript file. And then inside here, I actually have, um, I believe I have a plugin called VBase. And VBase, this is a VS Code snippet. And I can get that 
um, this if you look at my extensions which are right here and look at view snippets I have this view to snippets installed and this has snippets for all sorts of things um, which are helpful helpful I also have this view vs code snippets that are by Sarah Dasner I believe this is the one yeah this is the one that has the snippets for TypeScript so that's the one you want right there so what you do is when you're typing something in you just type in fee base and it gives you the option for TypeScript and I just hit enter and voila here it is so now it puts this lang equals ts and that means it's a TypeScript file so I'll just do I don't know hello world here and you can see here there's different types of ways you can use TypeScript inside your view file view project so you can use either the option based API the composition based API or the class based API so let's start with the class based API this is uses these decorators called component and prop I think this is the kind of most complicated way of, of using TypeScript inside your inside your view projects I mean at this point you might as well be using angular um, I know some teams that love using this and they've gotten used to it and they're really good at it uh, I would not recommend this if you're a beginner because this is kind of a different shift you kind of have to learn how to use this view class component and the view property decorator the composition API uh, looks more like this you do an export default create component and then you kind of put your props in and, and it's it's basically uh, like your comp it's a composition way of doing it I don't use it this way um, I think this is still a little little bit more complicated I think the easiest one is just to do the options.api you can add your name your props your data object just like you normally would but now you get the option of using types so if you use Sarah Drasner's view TypeScript um, snippets then it does this option based API so now like if I put a data object here um, I can return I can return an object and I don't know some message hello world um, I can even if I wanted to this is just a, a message right here let's see here I could do h3 hello world no, excuse me it's message message like this I could save it and then if I go to slash Eric right here it says my hello world so I have two hello worlds in a row um, and I could just call this header if I wanted to yep so that's working there and then you get all the benefits of TypeScript um, if I was importing something in I would be able to to use it um, like if I created a computer property we can try that out real quickly oops so if I do compute it here and then in the computed I had one I don't know we could just use this example full name we can say it's a type returns a type string and then we can return um, I don't know we would have to have like first name Eric last name Hanchet, that's me and I can do return uh, this dot first name and then this dot last name and then I can put up here I don't know full name and by the way you can see here I don't get any errors it's this type string if I save it and then I come back up to my TypeScript you can see here's my name shows up but what happens if I put like number here number but now I get a big red squiggly arrow that says the string is not assignable to type number so you can see here the TypeScript's working because I it, the type isn't matching up so it's giving me an error all right so that was a lot of information pretty quickly I'd love to hear if you guys use Nuxt with TypeScript or view with TypeScript I think it's it's uh it's really smart to add inside your projects especially when you start adding a bunch of different libraries and you can get the types for those libraries it just makes you so much better and it and it also solves a lot of problems where you um, a lot of little problems because it catches it before it builds and compiles because you'll know oops I actually returned a 
string when I should have returned a number. So I really appreciate you guys watching. And if you've made it all the way to the end, you know, and you haven't checked out my book, my Vue.js in action book, you know, you can get the first chapter for free. Just look in that description below, click on it. Uh, you put your email address in, I'll send it to you. And also I'll update you guys every time I do a new video. So check it out. Thanks.